the NZT India Beachhead Advisor, Mr. Soam Mithil. Mr. Mithil has had more than three decades of experience in the IT and automotive sector. He has worked in several leadership positions at multinational companies, including HP and Wipro, and has a strong command over the dynamics of the IT industry at an international level. He also served as the former president of the National Association of Software Services, Software and Services Companies, NASCOM, the flagship industry association for India's $154 billion IT industry. Today in his talk, Mr. Mithil will share with us the multifaceted opportunities that India offers for New Zealand businesses in the booming Indian tech sector, as well as how best to tap into these opportunities along with case studies. So please join me in welcoming Mr. So Mithil. Good afternoon, and it's always a pleasure being here. I do recall, I think it was three years back that I was at a similar conference here in, in Auckland, and INZBC does a phenomenal job, uh, I think, to see how many people are here uh, traveling from India, and many of you who have come and joined in uh, from New Zealand is amazing. Yeah, I think I'm the only odd man out here because uh, uh, everybody is either aviation or tourism, which are anyway very closely connected. I represent technology, uh, but then technology is pervasive. I guess uh, there is no tourism and there is no aviation without one. Uh, uh, you know, you can never escape uh, PowerPoint, so I did bring in some slides to keep me honest here. Uh, there are lots of them there. I'm going to skip many of them. Uh, if you change three or four of those slides and remove them, then you can actually put those three slides for any other vertical. The message that I give will still be the common one across industry segments. So take it in that spirit. Uh, what I thought I would uh, cover here today is uh, really a question that came to my mind when uh, New Zealand has so many opportunities to serve so many countries. Is India a market that you can ignore? And I just thought I would uh, present here. The purpose is not to sell India, but to really say uh, what opportunity exists there, whether it is today, tomorrow, or in the long term. And, and particularly then in the tech sector, uh, what are the issues to consider and how to get started? And I thought the best thing I could do is not talk about the opportunity that exists, but really bring in examples of some New Zealand companies who have done an amazing job, have come in, and today uh, India is a significant part of their business, and I thought nothing better than proof points. And I would also share with you how they made it happen. So I suppose those would be uh, good for you. Uh, I must give a disclaimer here. Anything that you talk about India must be with several million, hundred million, 300 million, because those are the numbers that come up. But if you look at just this slide here, whether it's the population, GDP, GDP per capita, the export volumes that are coming in, the, uh, the production, and I could put many more such parameters. I think there is continuous growth coming in, and that 8% GDP actually gets translated into real uh, growth and real business that happens. And if you, uh, when we talk about the trade that happens between New Zealand and India, I think it has improved over the years, but is that what our aspiration is? Is that an underperformance from our side? Is that the scope, or is there more? Uh, the, what's driving it? And you know, if you look at what's driving that growth, it's really, if I would put five big things that are happening. Infrastructure, we were woefully short of it. Great investments are happening. We have many people present here in the audience who are in airline business, airports, roads. I think that's growing. Right. Technology itself, and I'll speak a little bit more about it. Financial services, everything is getting digital, banking, uh, the financing that's happening uh, of, uh, of credit, and how we are actually crossing. Uh, I think there are going to be more mobile applications going uh, rather than any bank. So the first person who will ever bank in India would not be in a branch, but actually will be through a mobile. Uh, automotive industry because of, again, movement and healthcare. Uh, these are just five, but uh, underlying these are even more, but these are big five sectors uh, deciding the growth. Uh, I'll just spend a little time on this slide here. 
you know, our structure, economic structure today is this pyramid that you see. Uh, uh, few people on the top, majority of the grow, uh, mature economies do not have that structure, right? We have a very large number of people in the lower segment and then the middle. But go forward, this graph is changing rapidly and it's moving more towards being a diamond, which means people from the lower end are actually moving into being in the middle class, and I think that is driving growth because they're consuming, they're buying TVs, refrigerators, mobile phones, their eating habits are changing, they're going to schools, they're flying. So I think that is the big opportunity, and this curve, you have no option well, but to continue to move. So I think this trend, the graph of the diamond there is a little more exaggerated, but I think does represent uh, the move that's taking place. I often say that you should never look at India from a perspective of uh, market surveys, because market surveys will look at the past and they will ignore what's ahead in the future. Uh, if, if I just go forward, I, I have a snapshot of the IT industry. Uh, uh, you'll be surprised, it's about $160 billion uh, today, and uh, you know, a, a large part, 95% of it is probably exported in terms of services, and yeah, we have very large number, almost 4 million people working there, 35% of them approximately are women, so I think this industry has changed the way things are. Uh, if you look at the more modern way, it's not only the software, hardware, but it's becoming a digital country. We would jump uh, and frog leap many technologies because we have no choice. We cannot go sequentially and adopt that. So today, the largest number of internet users in any country and the growth there is actually happening in India for WhatsApp, Facebook, Google. The number of people that are getting are not highest growth, but highest in sheer numbers. So all this is changing the face of the country, and I don't want to get into any more details here, but today whether it is, uh, most things are happening in a digital manner, and that's the way we will reach out to people. Uh, we have enormous government support. It's government's objective to use digital to reach out to pe people. We cannot educate and provide healthcare to our, our poor people through the traditional means of sending a doctor or having teachers in schools because you won't have them enough. So I think technology, again, is playing that role. Why I mentioned this here is for New Zealand companies to see if that's the picture, is there an opportunity for them to go plug in there? Uh, the uh, enterprise, again, uh, there is a headroom for everybody to grow. Uh, they are all getting into digital. So on the left-hand side is what probably happens globally, and you can see there is a gap, and that gap is an opportunity. I'm going to slip this, but you can see, uh, you know, whether it is. So it's not old technology, IoT, AI, machine learning. All these are getting embedded very deeply into the solutions that are coming up. Uh, startups. So it's not only companies coming in today. Uh, we have large number of startups. Young people are taking chances. Failure, which was looked down upon, is. As, uh, and was not an option today. It's taken in the stride, and young people are joining and starting uh, new tech companies. Uh, just uh, last count, we had five and a half thousand of them. Just last year, we added thousand more tech startups, because this is where innovation will happen. And many of these startups are now tying up internationally so that they can get the innovation to the rest of the world as well. Very busy slide. Uh, this shows all the companies around the world who are leveraging Indian tech resources. So they may not have, most of them have operations and sell in India, but majority of them are using it for design, for doing their IT work or, or anything else. And we have about 840,000 very highly skilled people working for the globe out of India today. I'm going to just spend, I know I've got a few minutes left, but I'm going to spend time in the last three or four slides. So, can you ignore this market, right? And I think it's a choice that you have to take. Demographic shifts, as I showed you, the transformation in business. Uh, a lot of people tell me that, you know, India is a difficult market, but my question is, is there any easy market left anymore? There is no low-hanging fruit to, to take, right? So any new expansion is your own creativity 
of how you're going to do it, but things are changing rapidly. For somebody like me, who's worked 40 years in the corporate sector there, I've seen the change. I can feel the change myself. Lots of headroom. Market is diverse. One mistake we tend to make is, uh, I would say, New Zealand is still a very homogeneous market. Ours is not. You got to segment the market, position your product very appropriately there. And if you do that, everywhere. So today, I showed you the triangle. There are people who buy Rolls Royce there. And there are people in the bottom of the thing who won't be able to even buy a cycle, but, or buy a cycle. So I think you have to find what's your product. And in every segment, there is enough volume for you to fix. I put some words there that it's not only about selling to, you have to sell through. Don't talk about import and distribute. It's about creating the market. This is the market which you can create. We have seen so many people come and create the need rather than meet the need. And I think that's, that's the message I would really give. And many have succeeded. And what have they done? They've used any of these models. They have put up their own setups, they can form JVs, they can outsource their work, they can leverage the startups that are there. You could set up your own in-house center to leverage the resources, and you can do niche acquisitions as well. So depending upon where you are, all these models are there. And by the way, New Zealand companies have used them as well. So let me say, if we have to do explore the market, build very strong conviction. You cannot say I'm just kind of you know, wetting my feet there. And many times I've seen some of the companies who said, you know, we have a sales office in, in Singapore. Can we just extend and somebody goes across to India? I think you will have to change that strategy and look at it from a much longer horizon. Segment the market well. Determine the product attributes that meet that segment and decide your business model. And I guess uh, you know, New Zealand companies are very smart business people, right? But if they go carefully doing this, I think there is money to make and business to do. Uh, I've got three case studies here, and I'm going to go through them very quickly. Racon, a company which is based in Auckland, went and did an acquisition in, in France. Uh, amazing technology they got, but the French cost and uh, their distribution was so expensive, they made a loss. They tied up a joint venture with the Indian company who set up a manufacturing plant in India. And just focus on this little box there. Their volume was 60,000 oscillators in 2008. In 2015, they sell now 800,000. The revenue was 4 million, it's 30. The price was $65, came down to 38. <coughs> and from a loss, they make profit. And guess what? The Indian partner changed this business model. They want to now get into assemblies. So the uh, New Zealand company has bought out their share and is now got 100% operation out of India. Amazing model of combining together and moving forward. Another example of Vista, uh, an entertainment company. I'm sure many of you know this company. They tied up. They saw an opportunity in India, Bollywood. People should be buying tickets online. They tied up with the Indian company, appointed them as a distributor. Uh, the <coughs> Today, Vista has 75% market share in the world's largest movie selling country, movie ticket selling country. They have uh, 1,200 cinemas using Vista software, right? And it's also gone down to tier two cities. Again, an amazingly successful. Here, there's been a partnership model, and they worked very good, together, very well together. Third, a company called Star, uh, in a sense, tourism area. They run hotel management. The founder here saw an opportunity. He said there were 10,000 hotels in New Zealand, but he did well. But we had 80,000 hotels in India at that time. He said, I must get into the market. He found a friend, Indian, who was in New Zealand, asked him to go set it up in India. Today, they are all over the country. Uh, and I think more importantly, their price realization is the same that they get in New Zealand that they get in India. They have a very large market share. 25% of their revenues come from India. And more importantly, out of the number of employees, the 130 they have, 105 are in India. When what do they do? Majority of them are developing software and supporting STARS business in Middle East and Europe because India offers a time zone advantage. 
because what you can't cover from New Zealand, you can cover there. So I, I just thought, rather than talk about just the promise, I should bring you some examples of amazing works. These are not large conglomerates. These were three relatively, some small and some medium-sized companies who took the chance, looked at the opportunity, and made it happen. So I would say, in conclusion, there are no difficult, easy markets. The opportunities in this market are for us to make and to harvest them. I think we have to match our offering to the market segment that we operated and be willing to take that risk. And that's what business is about. Take that risk, adopt your business model to these new markets. Thank you very much. Thank you.